You don't need to call your name. Hallelujah. Amen. Please, amen. Adonai, we worship you. Son of God, you are so good. Almighty God, I love it and your dominion is forevermore. Adonai, Adonai, we worship you. Son of God, you are so good. Almighty God. I love be the name. Your dominion is forevermore. Is forevermore. Adonai, we worship you, Son of God. You are so good. Almighty God, I love be thy name. Your dominion is forevermore. Oh, oh, send your fire just now. Oh, Lord. Send your fire right now. Oh, Lord. send your fire right now. Baptize everyone. Lord, send your fire just now. Oh Lord, send your fire. Oh, send your fire right now. I'm baptized everyone. Glorious God, beautiful. Excellent Lord, we bow before your throne. Glorious God, beautiful King. Excellent Lord, we bow before your throne. We bow. We bow, bow before, before your throne before. to worship at your feet. We bow, bow before, before your throne. You are a glorious God. We bow. We bow, bow before, before your throne. To worship at your feet, we bow before your throne. You are a glorious God. Amen. Father, we thank Amen. you. Amen. We magnify you. Speak to our heart. Answer the questions yourself, and your name will be glorified. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Good. What are the songs of a backslider and that of those standing firm? What are the songs of a backslider and that of those standing firm? Okay, because in one of the topics that we did when we were treating David, we dealt with something that has to do with backsliding. So this is asking, what are the songs of a backslider and those standing firm? So we that's the question on ground now, and we look forward to somebody answering the question. Let's go. Who wants to start? What are the songs of a backslider 
and those of us standing firm. Who would want to stand? Who will tell the topic? At the songs of Black Tyler and those of those that are standing firm. Who is starting? Before we start calling names. Everybody must try and say something. If you are there, shout hallelujah. 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 If there's only one person. If you are there, shout hallelujah. 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 The people that shout hallelujah, let one of them answer. If you know shout hallelujah, you have to answer. What are the songs of a backslider? I mean, that of those standing found. Okay. When what, what this is saying in essence is that what are the things that the backslider will experience? And what are the things that someone who decide to start with Jesus will experience? What are the experiences between a backslider and a Christian at the standing found? Can somebody mute that stuff, please? No bloody. Who should tell the Loss topic? Loss of protection. Loss of what? Protection. Loss of protection. Okay. Loss of protection. Good. Loss of protection. So another words, which is the second stuff they will do, the black slider will have fear. Okay, another person, well done. Another? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Compromise. Compromise. Backslider will begin to compromise on the things of God. To compromise on the things of God. Good, good, good. Well done. Now, from the topic you treated, you know, the backstabber is somebody that has come back. Somebody that looked come back from the ways he has been following. And the backslider, like you said, we, we don't have confidence of faith in his God anymore. We saw in Numbers chapter 13, 32 to 33, Numbers 13, 32 to 33, when the Israelites were sent to go and spy the land, though if you go fast track that move it to when Rehab was saying that we have heard about you when the Red Sea parted, we are afraid. So when these guys went to spy the land, there were 10 people there who were classed as people are backstage. Why? Because they were afraid. They saw themselves as grasshoppers. In their own eyes, they were grasshoppers. In the enemy's eyes, they said they were grasshoppers. So the backslider sees himself as somebody that will, will not be able to do what God has ordained him or her to do. John 15, verse 5. Somebody read that. John 15, verse 5. If you are there, this you will gain from this thing. John 15, verse 5. It's Bible story. So somebody read John 15, verse 5. We don't have our I am... I am the vine, you are the branches. He who okay. abides in me and I in him bears Good. much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Okay, man. Going forward, everybody should have your phone and your Bible by your side because we'll be reading scriptures. It's Bible study. of which we have been questions and answer. See what he said? Abide in me and I in you. So the last bit says, without me, you can do nothing. So the moment Jesus leaves a man, he shows. It's the moment he leaves you, you can't do nothing. Because of those guys, they were no more with God. So they, say, they saw themselves as grasshoppers. Okay? 4 Samuel 17, 33 to 37. Somebody read that. 4 Samuel 17, 33 to 37. Unless to compare to someone who is standing firm with God, Two people will look. 
Somebody read Numbers 1330. Numbers 1330. One person, 1 Samuel 17, 33 to 37. Another person, Numbers 13, verse 30. 1 Samuel. 17, 33 to 37. Saul replied, You are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight mm -hmm. him. You are only a young man, and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its ear, struck it, and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. These uncircumcised Philistines will be like one of them, because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of the Philistine. Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. Hallelujah. So you can see a man that is still standing firm with God, how bold he will speak. Your language in the kingdom tells us whether you are still with Christ. He knows what God can do. He knows the, the power of his God because he's still standing with God. Okay? You can, if you look at the story of David, because his Bible study as well, do we answer your question? You find out that after the issue of Bathsheba and we are, you find out that one of the giants almost killed him. He lost his strength. So the moment you turn away or you allow sin, you begin to lose strength. But when you are in Christ, the Bible says in Philippians 4.13, 4, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So those who are standing firm, let's mute that please, who are standing firm with Christ, they have this confidence in their God. That's why the scriptures say, those who know their God shall be one, shall be strong, and shall do express, because you are still standing with Christ. But when you backslide, you turn back, you will not be bold anymore. Hmm. Who can read that place? Numbers 13.30. Numbers 13.30, quickly. Numbers 13.30, I read. Then Caleb silenced the people mm -hmm. before Moses and said, we should go up and take possession of the land. For we can certainly do it. That's it. The backslider will say, we cannot. The man standing with God will say, we can. The people that are still with Christ, I want them to shout, we can. We can. We can. All right, so it's only if you out of all of us, there's only three or four. The people that are standing of all of us, the people you know you are still standing with God, say we can. We, we can. can. We can. So when they give you an assignment, your language will tell us whether you are still for Jesus or not. Because if you are still for Jesus, you speak like Caleb and Joshua that say we can. The language or the song of the backslider is, we cannot. Oh, we can't do this. When Brother G Joe tried it, you know what, how he ended. This, that. That's the song of the backslider. But you standing with God, you can always do anything God has ordained you to do. You can fulfill destiny. You can, get, you can be prime minister. You can be president. You can be great because you are still in Christ. In Christ, we can do all things, okay? So the song of those who are standing firm in Christ is that we can. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. The backslider will say we cannot. The backslider will say they are uh, grasshoppers. Okay, let's move faster. So we have done that. The next question, please. Anybody want to ask something? The next question, please. What are the causes of fear? What do I need to do to be bold? What are the causes of fear? What do I need to do to be bold? Who wants to try? 
what are the causes of fear. You know, these things are opening your eyes, giving you insight. The devil don't like it. He doesn't like you to hear the truth. He wants you to hear all these people that will go on the poop and be fighting themselves and talk about a lot of pictures and all the rest. This is digging deep. We are answering questions based on the series, David, and other questions that you have so that you can understand the scripture. What are the causes of fear? What do I need to do to be bold? Who wants to start? Is Dr. Diaz? I was about to speak. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to call you. <laughs> it's because I'm in a place where there are multiple noise. And noise. Okay. So the, the first cause of fear is sin. Good. Sin. Whenever you sin, fear sets in because you are disconnected from your source, which mm. is God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Any other contribution? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Isaiah because I was chapter 53, verse 14. Mm-hmm. The Bible says that the sinners in Jerusalem shake with fear. Mm-hmm. Terror seizes the godless. Let me just stop there. So, um, like, just to buttress what doctor said, sin brings fear. Sin brings torment. Good. Genesis 3, 8 to 10. Genesis 3, 8 to 10. You see, the moment man sin from Genesis 3 that the serpent deceived the man and the woman, the Bible says they started hiding themselves, covering themselves. You understand? They had the voice of God, and they were now afraid. You see, I had the voice, I, you, I was afraid. So the moment we sin, like we have said, fear set in. Fear set in. Another thing that causes fear is weakness. Somebody read Psalm, is this Psalm 125? No, Proverbs 28.1. Proverbs 28.1. Read Proverbs 28.1. The wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are as bold as lions. You see, the wicked flee. If you are wicked, you run from the devil. You run. I remember one time I was listening to a man of God. He said, ah, the devil is powerful. It's so powerful. You, you can, you know. I was listening to someone one time in the church and the person said, ah, you don't know how powerful the devil is. Uh, you are afraid of the devil because you are into the occult. You are wicked. <laughs> That's it. The wicked runs when no one pursues. The sinner we, is afraid. The sinner is afraid. Psalm 56, verse 3. Somebody read Psalm 56, verse 3. Psalm 53, verse 3. 56 whenever, verse 3. I, whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. That's it. It's not a fear will not come. But whenever I'm afraid, I will trust in God. In God, I will have my confidence. I will put my trust. Because as the world is now, fear will come. All these things will come. But because I have God, my trust in God, we keep the fear for me. Somebody read Psalm 125, 1 to 3. And somebody, Psalm, somebody, Psalm 34, verse 9. Psalm 34, verse 9. Another person, open your Bible to 1 John 4, 18. 1 John 4, 18. We start with Psalm 125, 1 to 3. Go ahead, please. They that trust in the Lord. Mm-hmm. Shall be as Mount Zion, mm-hmm. which cannot be removed, yes, but abideth forever. As yes. the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people, yes, from henceforth even forever. That's but the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, yes, lest the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity. Now, hallelujah. As long as you are for Jesus, the million for Jesus, the Lord of the wicked. We not rest upon you. As long as you are for Jesus, you are prayerful, you are standing your ground, you can be conquered by any form of wickedness. That's what the Bible says. So why are we afraid? Psalm 34 verse 9. Psalm 34 verse 9 says, Fear the Lord, ye his godly people, for those who fear him will have all they need. That's it. It's only one person you will fear, and that is God, not man, 
not situation God. First John 4 18. First John 4 18. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. First John 4 18 says, There is no fear in love, mm -hmm. but perfect love casteth uh, out fear, because fear are torment. Either That's fear it. is not made perfect in love. That's it. So it says, Perfect love casts out fear. So if I want to overcome fear, I need to love God perfectly, flawlessly. Perfect love casts out fear. Okay. If I have that genuine, sincere love for God, it drives out fear. Why? It says fear brings torment. Fear brings torment. Fear brings a it's a tormenting spirit. It's a demon. It's a demon. And if you are coming from some of these false religious beliefs, and you, are, you, you, you convert and become a Christian, one of the things that you've got to fight with or conquer is fear. Because when you are in those false beliefs, one of the stuff that the enemy tends to hold you down is fear. If you leave, something will happen. If you leave, this will happen. So by the time you come become a Christian, they tend to also use that fear to pursue you if you don't stand your ground. That's why you need to know scriptures of boldness, confessing them, standing on them, knowing them, so that you conquer fear. Perfect love for God, for his word, for the things of God, conquer fear, because fear is a tormenting spirit. What do I need to be bold? I need power to be Perfect, um, my love to, my love for God. I need to increase my love for God. Why need, why need to be bold? I need to be free from sin. I'm not okay of demonic boldness, you know, because the kingdom of darkness people, they can be bold, arrogantly bold. I'm talking of boldness in humility. What do I need? I need my heart to be for Christ. I need to have turned away from sin. I need to walk in righteousness, in holiness. Say the what the wicked flee when no one pursue, but the righteous is bold. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Our Father is the Lion of the tribe of Judah. So a lion is bold. Bible says the lion is the only animal that will not you will not see in the back of the lion. It will confront you. So as children of God, we need to confront any situation that wants to conquer us boldly. You get it. So we have addressed that. Unless you have something to add to it. Let's move for now, sir. Oh, wow. This is a big one. In our study of David, and according to 1 Samuel 26, 12, the Lord gave David a great advantage for victory over his enemy by putting his enemy and his security in deep sleep. But David failed to take advantage of it. How can God's work in Psalm 105, 14 to 15 be related to David's action in Psalm, in 4 Samuel 26, 12, who was anointed but not a king? So to understand this, let's read 1 Samuel 26, 12. 4 Samuel 26, 12. Can somebody read that? And somebody will read for us Psalm 105, 14 to 15. So David took the spear and jar of water and jar of water that we are near so so it. Then is then he and Abishai got away without anyone seeing them, or even walking up because the Lord has put so Saul's men into a deep sleep. Okay. Good. So it was God. Now we know it was God that put them into deep sleep. So why did so David, not kill him. Psalm 105, 14 to 15. 105, Psalm 105, verse 14 to 15. He allowed no one to oppress them. For their sake, he rebuked kings. Do not touch my anointed ones. Do my prophets no harm. Good. Anybody want to try before I answer that? Anybody want to try? Hmm? Okay, let's go. Listen carefully. This will, I think this will help us. 
You know, this is a case of two anointed persons. Listen carefully, please, so that you don't you understand what I'm saying. This is a case of two anointed people. David anointed but not king. Saul anointed but was backsliding. Okay? The Spirit of God had left him but still in leadership position. I'll say it again because this is, you need to get this. Two anointed people. The anointed versus the anointed. You know, the Bible says the gift of God are irrevocable. Okay? That God don't take some things from us. So Saul, the Spirit of God left him but the leadership stayed there. Eli was anointed, backsliding state, he, he prayed for Anna, Anna still conceived and had a child. Okay? David anointed, but not king. Okay? Now listen. We are all anointed children of God. Yes? But I'm speaking about anointed people who are anointed for specific leadership or spiritual roles. It can be in the church. People who are, like the case that is mentioned, spiritual leaders, people are anointed for take, to take leadership positions or spiritual roles, okay? Let me digress a bit. Do you know that the Bible says we should not speak evil of leaders? Do we know? The Bible says that all leadership comes from God. I'm giving up something. So anybody in a position of authority, whether the person is legal or not legal, the Bible says God will allow the person to be a leader. When Paul spoke against the high priest, you know he had to apologize. Okay? That's why the Bible says we should pray for leaders. We should pray for leaders. Say 1 Timothy 2, 1 to 2. 1 Timothy 2, 1 to 2. Okay? Now listen. Scriptures will show us submit to authorities, to leaders. Romans 31 to 2. Romans 31 to 2. Say we should all submit to leaders. Leaders. It's God that ordained them. Now, Saul was the leader. Okay? Though the Spirit of God has left him, but he was the leader. And he was also anointed. And David knew that he was anointed. Okay? Now, David is a spiritual man. He was anointed, but not a leader. He has not become the leader yet. So I'm thinking, this is my opinion on this. That does it mean that God was testing David's obedience, understanding of the law? Does it mean because the Bible says God that put Saul into deep sleep? Does it mean God was testing David's obedience to the law, to the understanding of scripture? Because it's really it's written here that you cannot touch God's anointed. And remember, David himself said it. Somebody should read 1 Samuel 24 5. 1 Samuel 24 5. Somebody read, please. Is anybody there? 1 Samuel 24 5. Fellow, we can finish on time. First Samuel 24 5. First Samuel 24 5. Afterward, David was David was conscious striking for having cut off a corner of his robe. Good. You see, so David did not kill him. He just decided, let me cut this the part of this cloth. And the Bible says he was convicted. You know, he was convicted. He was restless, I would say. His conscience struck him. Anything you do, we do in life, that we don't have peace, we are convicted, our conscience is not clear, know that it's not, it's God is not involved in it. Know that that's, God is not involved in it. So he is a spiritual man. So he knew that I can't kill this guy. I can't kill him. So he now he, he look at what he, he said something. If we look at his, his life, he said this guy can go to battle and die. Something may happen to him. He said, "Well, I am not going to kill him." That's wisdom. That's wisdom. That's wisdom. Okay. 
I don't believe he, David will have to kill Saul. Because if he kills him, he has broken scripture. He said, do not touch my nature and do my prophet no harm. And don't, he, it's not David that anointed Saul. It's someone. So David cannot, cannot, <laughs> he, can, he, can, he can't kill him. He can't, he can't kill him. Because it's a spiritual man. And the spirit led him rightly that I can't kill this man. And when he cut off his cloth, the spirit convicted him. That's the spirit convicting him. Those who are spiritual are led by spiritual by, by the spirits. That's my own explanation of, of that. Unless you have something else to add, or you don't understand it. Do we get it? Yes, sir. No? Yes, yes sir. sir. You got it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. Got it. Good. So you don't you don't just go about and we do things to say, oh, because God has given me my enemy, I must destroy this enemy. That the spirit must lead you. And let's go for the, to the last question for tonight. Let's have the last question, the last one for tonight. We are done. This is similar to it. Say Matthew 5, 42 to 45. At what point does God want us to start praying for the total annihilation of our enemies? As the Bible is not specific on the type of prayer we should pray for, for them. Repentance or destruction. They told me 33, 27. Again, somebody quickly read Matthew 5, 43 to 45. Matthew 5, 42 to 45. And they told me 33, 27. It's if to those who ask and don't turn away from those who want to borrow. You have heard the law that says love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you will be acting as true children of your father in heaven. For he gives his sunlight to both the evil and the good. And he sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Did you make that to 27, please? The two minutes at three twenty-seven. Somebody there, please, please for us, so that we can finish on time. It's almost it's time. But three minutes. The eternal God is your refuge. Yeah. And underneath are the everlasting arms. Yeah. It will drive out your enemies before you, saying, yeah. "Destroy them." So the question says, at what point does God want us to start praying? That our enemy must all of them die by fire. At what point? Who wants to start the quickly so that we can, we can run up? At what point would I send fire to consume them like John? Say, oh, let the fire come. Let can I come down fire so that this enemy will be destroyed? Or oh, at what point can we ask God to oh, are we going to pray? Oh, our Lord have mercy upon us. At what point? Who wants to try? Nobody? Uh, oh, go ahead, please. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The, the first thing is the person has to understand the definition of an enemy. Okay. So who do you take as an enemy first? Okay. That's, that's, that's the first thing. So what, according to what we dis discussed during the study, what may I see as an enemy is anything that wants to stop us from fulfilling the counsel of God for our life. It's not necessarily a person. So at the point when you see that this thing wants me to stop the counsel of God for my life, then you begin to pray against it. Uh, what you now pray about, the, allow the Holy Spirit to direct you. So there are some things that needs to die in our life. There are some habits that needs to die in our life. If is a person that God is standing in our way of fulfilling the counsel of God, allow the Holy Spirit to direct us on the kind of prayer you pray against the spirit that is that is making the person to do such things and allow God to answer it the way he wants to answer it. So that's my own little contribution on all that. Thank you. Acts chapter 13, 9 to 11. 
somebody read that. Acts chapter, Acts chapter 13, 9 to 11. Quickly, please. Acts chapter 13, 9 to 11. So we are having sound Bible knowledge, sound Bible study, so that we understand scripture this end time. For also known as Paul, was filled with the Holy Spirit, and he took the sorcerer in the eyes. Then he said, you son of the devil, full of every sort of deceit and fraud, an enemy of all that is good, will you never stop perfecting the true ways of the Lord. Watch now, for the Lord has laid his hand of punishment upon you, and you will be struck blind. You will not see the sunlight for some time. Instant, instantly, mist and darkness came over the man's eyes, and he began probing around, begging for someone to take, to take his hand and lead him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So that, that says to us that, like doctor said, it, it depends on who is the enemy in your, in your heart or the enemy confronting you. This guy was an enemy and wanted to start against the salvation of the governor. So he was an enemy of the gospel. He was the sorcerer. So you know he was somebody that would do all amounts of wickedness to ensure the man is not safe and also to do wickedly to um, Paul. But you see, the Bible says, says something interesting. It says, Saul or Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with the Holy Spirit. So it started with, the Bible saying, filled with the Holy Spirit. So he was led by the Spirit to deal with the guy. Because sometimes you confront the Spirit that is behind the person, but sometimes you come in open confrontation with people who are in the occult, wicked people. And sometimes they need to taste the taste of fire. Until they see the test of life, they might all want to believe that your God is powerful than them. So this was the encounter. This was an enemy, an enemy of the gospel. And the spirit, um, dead Paul, take this man on and let him be blind for some time. And Paul just spoke and led him for some time. Thank God he said for some time. But that would have taught him a lesson that there are some people you cannot mess about with. They can take on you and remove you from the way. I was in the place yesterday and one of the officials there was just talking in I said, an African setting, you know. One of the officials was because his leader there was talking to somebody that went to do something in that place anyhow. And the guy turned to me when I was talking to the guy. He said, he said he would deal with me. He said, I will go spiritual. You know? So there are people who they do things in the spirit realm to wicked people. But you Anyone that have to that want to come against you as an enemy, they want to stop you, stop the plans of God. If you have the spirit, the spirit will lead you on how to address it. Scripture says, because of time, let's round this up. Romans 8 26 to 27. Romans 8 26 to 27. It said, We don't know how to pray. Then the spirit itself we what? We give us the understanding of how to pray for or what to pray for. To pray according to the will of God. The Spirit will not only make you pray in the tongues, it will also give you prayer points to pray and lead you based on scriptures. So at what point will you pray for the enemy to fall down and die and be destroyed? It's at the point the Spirit leads you to pray. It's at the point you are led by the Spirit there. But you yourself, if you have been a Christian for a long time, you know that sometimes some issues become born in your heart and you want to just crush this uh, uh, anything standing on your way. You can take on the power behind the person, but the spirit can also lead you, like in the case of Paul, to take on the individual himself and remove that person from the way. He said, Alexander the copper smith have done me much harm. You know the scripture? And he said, the Lord will repay him. Okay? The Lord bless us. The Lord open our understanding. And the Lord give us all that we have been praying for. The Lord preserve and protect us. I soak everyone with the blood of Jesus. Next week will be better than this. We'll have more questions because we'll do that throughout this month. We'll have more questions next week. Make sure you don't miss it. God bless you. The Lord keep every one of us in Jesus' name. Because we've gone so much into time. Amen. We'll try and close it here. You give your offering. You know the church account. God will bless you. God will keep you. Thank you so much for joining.
The Lord bless you. Somebody shout yeah. hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, bless out hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's share the grace, please. The grace and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Follow me all the days of my life. Now dwell out of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Before you go, because I have some questions sent, uh, this one, next week we will do is divorce a sin. I think that's number eight. Is divorce a sin. So by the grace of God, Jesus started. So you go and prepare. Go and find out. Is divorce a sin? That's what we will do. Okay? We will spend the whole session of next week just dealing with is divorce a sin. Okay, so you to go and research, go and prepare. Okay, I'm giving you because that should be the next on this stuff. Okay, God bless you. Good night. Thank you, sir. Good night. Bye. Good night. God bless. Bye. Good night.